Following on from some comments on the YouTube videos I posted before about the layout, just thought I would share a few thoughts of things that I've learnt uh, having built this layout. I suppose the first thing to say is that I've built it in a shed in the garden. The shed is a log cabin style and is about 4.3 by 3.5 metres. That sounds quite big until you actually start building a double O gauge railway. And one of the things I have learned is that space is a premium. Now I had hoped to be able to run reasonable length trains, but if we go back to the terminus, which I decided to include, then we find that if you have more than two coaches and a locomotive at each end, that is about the limit of a platform and still having room to build a reasonable throat and have track leading round into the remainder of the layout. I could have sacrificed some of the complexity of the layout to the right of the terminus in and extended the terminus a bit further, giving me more room in the platforms. However, I decided that I wanted a more interesting layout to operate and so there was compromise in the length of the platforms. By using Station Pilot, I can probably get three coach trains and run those around the railway, and they'll look OK. As to the freight yard, I thought there would be plenty of room in the freight yard, with a turntable for engines, a bit of run-round facility, some sidings, and having experimented a little bit, I discovered that the sidings were not really long enough to build a decent-sized freight train up, to take out so as you can see I have recently extended one of the sidings and I need to do some scenic work on the end of that. So what else have I learnt? Well gradients are not a problem for most of the trains you can get a reasonable gradient about 1 in 40 or thereabouts and the trains will manage it quite easily especially with the short formations I've got. However what I did discover is that having vertical curves the transition from flat to the gradient and is a challenge and trying to get them smooth and keep the stock working smoothly over them particularly if you introduce a curve into the track at the same time. The top of this little bank here with the curve behind uh, in front of the windmill that's a area which took a lot of time to get the track into condition so the trains would not regularly derail. The whole uh, dynamics of going from a gradient to flat and at the same time going from straight to curve has caused some difficulties. Now I did manage to achieve a reasonable length for the middle station and the platform looks nice and long and certainly would handle longer trains than the terminus can cope with. The freight facility with the run round lines is a little bit tight but with a bit of juggling one can do some nice shunting activities as you'll have seen in one of the other videos on shunting. It also allows some nice reasonably gentle curves at the ends although they're probably tighter than I would like and would, if I had a bigger space I would certainly be making all of the curves a lot more gentle and particularly making the gradients more gentle. So there is a lot of track packed into a relatively small space and trying to get two levels so that one can have movements in different directions and uh, underneath the scenic areas has been a bit of a challenge and probably I have packed too much in. That I guess is one of the problems many of us have when we're building a railway we're over enthusiastic about the amount we want to include. But I guess that comes back to why do we build model railways? Do we build them for the fun of the construction and the scenery or do we build them for the fun of operating them? I wanted something that would be interesting to operate and hence I have made the railway perhaps more complicated than I would otherwise have done. I have tried to get perhaps too much in and certainly there is an area in the fiddle yard underneath where I would like, just turn the light on, to adjust the track layout I think I could turn these 
crossovers th around so that all of the tracks lead to the bottom layer and only one leads to the incline back up to the terminus. But you learn from as you go along.